And there was the horntail at the other end of the enclosure, crouched low over her clutch of eggs, her wings half furled, her evil yellow eyes upon him, a monstrous scaly black lizard thrashing her spiked tail, leaving yard-long gouge marks in the hard ground. Here's a look at the brand new McFarlane toys, Dragons, Harry Potter's Hungarian Horntail. Harry returns for his fourth year at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, along with his friends Ron and Hermione. There is a major upcoming tournament between the three major schools of magic, with one participant selected from each school by the Goblet of Fire. When Harry's name is drawn, even though he's not eligible as the fourth player, he must compete in the dangerous contest. Next hint or not, there's no way I'm putting some dragon egg underwater. Before, of course, we get a closer look at the Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire Hungarian horn tail, as you can already see, I've got my tape measure prepped and ready to measure off to the top of the dragon. Now, this particular dragon is going to be a little bit smaller than the recently looked at Lord of the Rings Smaug. Uh, I guess what I really should do is measure to the top of its wing, because, of course, that is the highest point on the dragon. And if that's the case, you're looking at the Hungarian horn tail being about seven inches in height, or it's going to be about 18 centimeters tall. Then for its wingspan, which is the one thing it's much greater in, from one end of its wing, if I can get the tape measure out, one, one end of its wing to then the other, the wingspan of the horn tail is 16 inches in width, or it's going to be about 40 inches wide. Speaking of Smaug, let's slide over the horn tail and bring in the earlier looked at Lord of the Rings Smaug. Now, one thing, obviously, is while maybe the horn tail is lacking the size that Smog did have, Smog, keep in mind as well, was trying to protect his treasure, so he's a little bit more closer to his display stand. The wingspan, though, of the horn tail is much more predominantly featured here and really gives you an idea of how much wings this smaller sized dragon actually has. Having the horn tail now front and center, looking at the trading card that comes included with the dragon. It does say Harry Potter, although what it doesn't say on the card at least is the Goblet of Fire. Don't worry, they've covered the territory at least by printing on the side of the placard. And then on the other side of the breathing dragon face, you've got Hungarian horn tail. The back of the carts does still say the same, although there's a paragraph read as well you can read for yourself. Just happens to be the same thing I read at the beginning of this review. Now, usually when it comes to these trading cards, you know me, I like to put them in my trading card sheets, but that really only rules applies for when it comes to DC multiverse figures. Comic-based characters, I like to really put them in the sheets. These kind of cards, though, I really wish that they could have had a little standee, something similar for, for example, like the movie Maniacs. You know, they all come with little sort of standees. I'm kind of just simulating it right now with my thumb and my finger. But if they gave a little standee and said, say, McFarlane Dragons, I think it would be a nice way to showcase the card along with the dragon. Or if they had made, for example, put slots somewhere on the display base where you could slot then the card in place, it's, again, a nice way, of, especially if you're one that likes to collect the McFarlane Dragon line, a nice way of presenting a card that goes along with the dragon. Even though you feel like you may be missing some of the details about the dragon, one thing at least that gets covered is the territory of having the front placard telling you exactly the name of the character. So we've got Harry Potter, this time the Goblet of Fire, and also as well it says Hungarian Horntail down below. I love the idea that they include these placards. So in case you have somebody that isn't as as much of a an expert of dragons as perhaps you, that then walked in and saw your collection of dragons on the shelf, would then at least be able to look at the placard and know not only the movie that it cam comes from, but also the name of the dragon itself. I love the way they've actually done this in a brighter yellow it pops really nicely against the backdrop of a very otherwise dark gray display stand some assembly was required when it came to hungarian hung, a hungarian horn tail a bit of a tongue twister is that you had to take the wings of course and you had to attach them in place always is the case when we get these dragons that putting the, the wings in place there always seems to be a wing that never snaps properly in place when we looked at Smaug, for example, I think it was this one side that wasn't connecting properly. Although pretty uniformed, I mean, the body fits quite nicely to these wings. And I thought really of all the dragons I've looked at here on this channel, these were the wings that snapped in the easiest. The wingspan of the dragon, you can see, is even bigger than the body. Some all the assembly was also required, of course. You have to take yourself the dragon and attach it onto a very decorative looking detailed display base. While really not having much in the way of color, it certainly does have a really interesting rock face to it. I had to take, of course, the teeth, the bottom of the feet, not the teeth, the feet, taking the, the pegs and attaching them into the provided holes. 
you'll see that these are the two that are attaching from the feet. Then you'll see this little tiny peg down below here and one that's in gray on the back. Those are some extra things that you have to also add to the dragon. Like for example, it's golden egg. The golden egg is one thing it's trying to protect while being chained up like this. The egg itself snapped fairly easy in place and nicely molded here in a, I don't know if it's actually molded in gold plastic or likely they probably would have gone in there and painted in gold. Either way, though, it does certainly stand out. And it stands out a lot easier, the fact that they made the base as dark as of a gray as they actually did. The last thing that had to be installed when it came to this dragon, if you've seen the film, is it's chained up. The chain attaches onto the back with a pretty consistently sculpted peg. I mean, plugging that in place, obviously, if you look at it from the top, you can kind of very air obviously see the set section of the circle that's been plugged in place. But then the actual chain is a real metal chain. It attaches from the one end, and then it loops itself around the neck of the horn tail. Now, you could do of one, two things. You could do one of two things when it comes to attaching this, is that you can either feed this around the top of its of its body, the top of its spine, and then loop it, around it, loop it around its neck that way. But if you want to make it a little bit more cleaner, you can either attach it around the neck and then put the dragon down. Or you can do what I did. I put the dragon down first. Then I had to take the collar piece of the chain. I had to feed it through its feet. So basically I plugged it in here. I fed the chain through then its open legs and then wrapped around the, the front chain or the, the loop of the chain around the creature's neck. It fits in fairly easy, although you have to kind of get it around the spikes. Taking it off is almost just as difficult. In fact, it probably is a little bit more difficult because you're trying to do it the opposite way around. I mean, you're kind of working with the spikes when you're putting it in place, taking it off that, not that I can really ever see myself really wanting to take it off. You're going to run into the problem of hitting all these spikes along the way. I'm just going to leave it in place. I mean, it doesn't tighten itself up at all. You can see the way the chain is basically just attaching on two sides, but at least it's going to stay in place. I like the idea that they at least decided to use this in metal rather than plastic. So it gives a little bit of weight. It gives it a natural drape that chains would normally be. And it adds a little bit of extra pizzazz. Now, you don't really even have to have this display with the horn tail. If you wanted to, you could just completely omit the chain and leave it off completely. The only thing it unfortunately will leave is the back section here with an open hole. Unless you wanted to, you could also have just the, train, the chain draped on the ground. So it looks like the horn tail has broken free. The detailing done here to the horn tail is fantastic. Even though I am a bigger fan of creature-wise of Smaug, I think the dragon of the Horntail has been better sculpted here from McFarlane's team. I mean, I could be a little bit biased by the idea as well that the wingspan is a little bit more greater. There's a lot more interesting things when, when you're looking at a dragon that has wingspans like this, rather than wings that are basically just draped across the ground. Smaug was interesting enough, but I think I like the actual dynamic pose that this one has a little bit better. The wingspan for this particular dragon is quite a bit greater than its body. The body for the horn tail is generally really quite small, as well as the head. The head is actually one of the biggest things about the creature. It is nicely sculpted, although to go back and look at the movie again, I feel like some of the spikes on the top of the head are a little bit more of a whiter color than the darker gray that we're getting here. Tiny little slit for eyes, you can see as well the top and bottom of the teeth, and a very well sculpted and painted tongue on the inside of its mouth. I think also as well, the wings, I mean, again, I'm not going to be a stickler to much of the detail, but I think the wings are a little bit darker as well in the movie. They come across and read a little bit more here to brown, but I think in the movie, they're kind of more of a darker gray. But despite that, I mean, it's a really nice looking dragon. Again, very much smaller in size. This one doesn't have the the articulation when we looked at Smaug, for example. Smaug has the articulation in the tail for one reason or another. I don't even really know why they had to take the time to put articulation in the tail. But this one has more just a rubberized tail, and you really can't move it around. Even if really you did want to move it around, I mean, you'd only ultimately be breaking up the sculpt of one consistent series of spikes running all the way down to the bottom of the character's tail. I don't think it necessarily needs any articulation at all, but it has some really interesting little holes and marks and things left behind, things torn away from his, from its wings, for example. It's really well painted, but although, again, going back and seeing the movie, I think it's supposed to be a little bit darker than the approach of the brown that they end up going with here. Despite that, though, it is one dragon that I really am liking. I mean, again, I'm a little bit biased more when it comes to these dragons that I like the wingspans out myself just because they have a little more shelf appeal. Again, to compare this with the Smaug that we looked at before, bring back in Smaug so you guys can see, you know, again, by just the way he's supposed to be protecting his treasure would then justify, of course, why the wings are down like this. But I mean, really then to look at the two, I, I just think the these ones that have the wings out like this, there's a little bit more interesting stuff to look at. Not to say that Smaug is slouching at all, but I think between the two of the new dragons that we got here from McFarland's team, I prefer, I think, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire Hungarian Horntail over the earlier looked at Lord of the Rings Smaug. 
While I do think that the Lord of the Rings smog was the more interesting of the dragons on screen, I think though as a release from McFarlane Toys, the Hungarian Horntail has him beat. Maybe has something to do with the fact that this one does have a wingspan that's actually out. I mean, if you really want to have dragons on display, aren't you really one that's going to gravitate a little bit more to having wings out as opposed to wings draping down like, like curtain drapes? I mean, Smog obviously was protecting his treasure, so it would justify why that dragon had the wings posed the way that they did. But honestly, really, between the two, this one does it a lot nicer, actually having the wings out like this. It's a smaller in stature dragon, of course, but it does benefit from having some decent coloring done to it. I don't know if it's 100% accurate to the way it actually appears in Goblet of Fire, but I think, though, it was still nicely sculpted and very well painted. This one also benefits from having a real metal chain, something that you just can't simply replicate by using in plastic. I mean, yeah, they could have easily just sculpted a permanently pointed, a permanently molded chain that goes around the neck of the dragon and then attaches to the back of the actual display stand. But you really can't, again, replicate the weight, the feel, and just the way the drape of a natural, real metal chain. I'm glad to see that they actually use that. Now, you don't have to necessarily have this attached onto the dragon head. If you wanted to, you could leave it off, or you can also have it look like the dragon has broken free. Still a nice release, though, from the folks over at McFarlane Toys. I was actually trying to think of other movie dragons. Now, of course, they can always just spin the series off and just do more fantasy characters that aren't attached to necessarily a movie or TV series. But if they want to stick to film, couple of ones I was thinking of was Dragonheart. Sean Connery port portraying Draco in that movie. Love to see them do, for example, a Dragonheart. And I was also thinking Christian Bale's Reign of Fire. Two dragons from two different movies. I would love to see them do for possibly even future McFarlane dragon releases. What other dragons from movies or TV series? I can't really think of many from TV shows, but ones from films, what other ones would you guys like to see McFarlane tackle when it comes to his dragon property? Let me know down below in the comments section. Speaking, though, of McFarlane Toys, once again, I'd like to send a big thank you to the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide the sample of the Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire Hungarian Horn Tail. Of course, as always, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, I want to hit with a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing, and you certainly do want to stick around for more. I, I can't really promise, unfortunately, that we will be looking at any more dragons. I think we pretty much covered the territory there. But we definitely will be looking at some more McFarlane toys. In fact, if you want to get your fix for it right now, popping up the very end of this video will also be a playlist. Until, of course, any new videos pop up onto this channel, you can always go back. You can always go back, check out the content I've done from before of all the movie maniacs, of all the stuff. Everything that they ever have done, McFarlane Toys, that is, will be contained inside that playlist. Feel free to give it a gander. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.